It had been another pretty disappointing one-day campaign by England, who fielded new faces and had a revamped regime, but still failed to muster any kind of cutting edge in the limited overs format. For the West Indians, the 2-1 series win, along with the heroic Sir Batsman Shiv Chanderpaul, meant that what had been a pretty dreadful tour up until then at least ended on a high. And so, to the second part of the summer. The Indian party arrived to play two pre-test match tour games, the first against a weakened Sussex side down at Hove. That four-day game ended in quite an entertaining draw. The tourists were denied victory as the county champion's final pair of Robin Martin Jenkins and Jason Lurie held on for the final few overs of the match. A three-day game at Chelmsford followed against the England Lions, once known as England A. Andrew Strauss, who had struggled in the Test Series against the West Indians, desperately needed some form, but managed just a single in the first innings, bowled out by Zahir Khan. Sachin Tendulkar announced himself with a sublime 171, the master surely touring these shores for the last time and looking to make a real impression. Though the game petered out into a tame draw, Andrew Strauss found some form with 80 in the second innings. Mind you, the pressure was still on him as the Middlesex opener went into the Test Series. Meanwhile, a provisional 30-man squad for the 2020 World Cup in September was announced and one name made all the headlines. Marcus Truscothic had returned home early from the Ashes Tour of Australia but was in fine form for Somerset and now suggested that he might be ready to commit himself back to the international fold. England announced a 13-man squad for the first test against India. It included Steve Harmison but the Durham paceman was ruled out of the game and the rest of the summer, having aggravated a hernia injury in a county championship match. Stuart Broad celebrated his call-up with a five-for haul against the Indians, and the Hampshire fast bowler Chris Tremnett was later added to the squad in place of Harmison. Then there was a further huge injury blow for the England camp when it was revealed that Matthew Hoggard had suffered a back spasm the day before the match and was rated very doubtful to play. Despite England's injury worries, there was great expectation ahead of the series against an Indian team known to be great entertainers and likely to provide a much sterner test for Peter Moore's side, certainly than the West Indies had provided earlier in the summer. Thus, it was off to the home of cricket to Lords for the first test, where hopefully the sun might shine in a summer which had been dominated by poor weather. It's great to be back here after you know 11 years of making my debut and to come back to this ground is just feels great. And uh, the big four are there uh, in your side, which is exciting for us to watch. But you've lost the toss. Is that bad news for you? Well, I don't think you can be disappointed at a toss. I mean, uh, there's only you know the toss is a 50-50 chance. We've got to play good cricket over five days, and that's what we spoke about. And we would have liked to have batted first, but uh, but so what? We've got to bowl first now, and we've got to bowl well, and we've got to play some good tough cricket over five days. Is there a sense among some of your guys that this is? the last chance saloon in England, a chance to show off their talents? Well, I don't think the guys are thinking about it that way. They're thinking about just putting in a good performance. I think they, they enjoy coming here. They want to show, you know, the test matches here will be well attended. Everyone comes here, loves the game, supports the game. And, and we want to put up a good show. And, and that's what we're thinking about. I think the time for nostalgia will probably be towards the end of the series. India with that stellar collection of batsmen in the middle order. Raul Dravid, Sachin Tendulkar, Saurav Ganguly and Vivius Laxman. England with Michael Vaughan back, as we know, but with a, a very different bowling attack. Just 37 test matches between them and 127 test match wickets. Chris Tremlett preferred to Stuart Broad. There's Ryan Sidebottom, Monty Panasar and James Anderson. It's good to be back. I missed the first test of the season here against the West Indies, and it's always a special place to uh, play cricket, more, more special when you're England captain, so looking forward to a good week. I read that you sat in your armchair and watched a few of the one-dayers. I did. I, I certainly watched the 2020s from start to finish and obviously watched a, a few of the 50-over games, but, you know, it's, um, you know, it's quite interesting watching. Uh, it's better playing. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting out there and playing a good test this week. Now you've won the toss, looks a good pitch. Yeah, it looks a good pitch and we're going to have a bat, you know, try and, you know, get a good total on the board, put the Indians under that pressure by doing that. You know, we have an inexperienced bowling tack, so hopefully we'll get a good total on the board to help them out. England are away in the form of Alistair Cook's leg side play. Look how quickly that ball goes down the hill. Expect a fast outfield here, forget about all the rain. This has been mown as low and as tight as I've seen it in years, and it's surprisingly firm, that outfield. Ball. 
Strauss is away. Fair enough. He got himself into an excellent position. You've got to give opening batsmen a few of those thick edges. Yep. Very good. Quickly into position. No great pace from Zahir Khan. Venkatesh Prasad, the Indian bowling coach, just shaking his head on the left of screen there. He'll be very disappointed at what he's seen. Very comes with a very privileged opportunity to coach the Indian bowlers. Nicely placed by Andrew Strauss. Hasn't tried to hit it too hard, but I repeat, this outfield is exceptionally fast. Now that could be close. He takes a long time on Paya Buckner, and finally the change of bowling has worked. Surprisingly, Ganguly has been called into the attack after just one hour's play, and already he's ripped dividends and has shown what can be gained out of this surface if you are consistent in length. Well, I think the second point's the key one, Ian, if you can just bowl consistently. You know, it's not as if there's masses there, but if you just plug away, Bowl nice and straight, maybe do a tad with the ball. Uh, Alistair Cook might have got a rough one there, at least that's Hawkeye's view. But the minute it hit him, I think we all thought it was out. 76 for one. Michael Bond, the England captain, has come to the crease to replace Alistair Cook. Very pleasing shot from Michael Vaughan. The beauty about it is that he played with the full face of the bat, didn't try to close the face and uh, force it any square on the onside. He's now hit one just the other side of mid-on. That was an even better shot, really, because it's quite as full a delivery. The way he just steered that one wide of the fielder, knew exactly where he was hitting it. In the air, and it's dropped! That is an absolute sitter. It was Dinesh Kartik, the reserve wicketkeeper. And really, I mean, you could take that in your sleep, and he's, in fact, knocked his cap off at the same time. Good shot. Poor Fielding. But that's the Andrew Strauss of old. Big stride forward, gets his weight forward onto the ball. He hasn't been doing that very often in the last few months. Well, Andrew Strauss has 50. His own reaction tells enough of the story, I think. It's not... Uh, well, he's not embarrassed, but I don't mean that at all. I, I just mean that he understands it's not been a spectacular show and there's a lot more batting to come if he's to if you like relaunch himself beautifully placed by michael vaughan all swinging into his pads and the body shape over the stroke is near perfect Dispatch. Andrew Strauss is looking more and more confident with each stroke. He's had his moments in this innings, moments of nervousness and moments of luck. He's beginning to show the quality. Oh, a culture 50. Well, Michael Vaughan comes up with that shot. His ninth boundary. It's certainly been more short innings than Andrew Strauss's. Um, all those boundaries have been pleasing on the eye. Under partnership also between Strauss and Vaughan. Oh, well bowled. Well bowled. Just slid off the face. Might not go for four. Again, nice bowling, but you've got to back it up with some more good balls. And that outside edge brings up the 200 for one wicket. Oh, oh he's going to sweep that. It's too full, but he got away with it because he's a little bit leg side, and he's managed to get it a little bit of an inside edge. 
down to fine leg for four. Takes him up to 96 now. Oh, that's out. Well, could you believe it? He's worked so hard, battled away, really good concentration, then suddenly he just runs down the pitch to Anil Cumbly and nicks one to drive it at slip. Can you believe it? Well, the three figures got to him, Jeffrey. He's on 96, he's so desperate for the runs, he finally did something that he didn't want to do. He let the situation got the better of him. Credit to Anil Kumble for preying upon that and giving nothing away to Strauss. But I think what Lords appreciates today is a player not in his best form, fighting for dear life and setting England up in the match magnificently. Mustn't forget that. 2.18 for two, England. Now, here comes Kevin Peters. I wonder if he's refreshed after his break in the south of France last weekend. He made a valid point, I think, last week when he said there was too much international cricket and players like him were mentally tired. The ironic thing was he was making the point at a promotional event for one of his sponsors on a day off. Oh, that should race away. He's got a lovely fine leg glance on that. He's gone very quickly for four. Played nicely today, Michael Vaughan. Definitely, fluently, elegantly. He looks in good touch. Oh, <laughs> fetch that! Well, he stands still and very tall and swats it at the top of its bounds. Out! Michael Vaughan goes! The switch to around the wicket by R.P. Singh has done the job. And so his fine innings, 79 he made, comes to an end in uh, some yellow evening light. 252 for three. It's all right. There were all sorts of squeals as Peterson lashed out at that ball. I suppose England must be aware here of, of the problem of this last half an hour or so. Suddenly lose a wicket or two more, and it's a much more even day than India deserve it to be. That's close, that's out. Paul Collingwood straight away LBW to Kumble, who is a master of exactly this. Homing in on new batsmen, on opportunities, on minds that are waiting for the close of play. Fragile minds because of it. Well done, India. Different game suddenly. I think this is out. Watch it run in, sort of straightish run in. I think that's out. I think it's a brave decision, but they give a lot more LBWs on the front foot now than they ever did a few years ago. I don't think you can be cross at that. I suppose Collingwood won't like it, but it's 255 for four. Oh, well bowled. Well bowled. What a beauty from Singh. And finally, at 5-7, to seven, that was that for the day. I suppose the Indians might regard that as a bit disappointing. They had the cosh on England in the last 45 minutes or so. Still a good day for Andrew Strauss, very fulfilling innings for him, even though he didn't quite make it to 100. Alistair Cook played nicely for 36. Michael Vaughan, the best of English batting. Lovely, elegant, 79 from him. Peterson's unbeaten and side bottom yet to get off the mark. Nothing for Zahir Khan or Srisanth. Neither were quite at their best, though Srisanth's second spell was better. One each for Singh and Ganguly, and two for the ever-persistent and impressive Anil Kumble.
And then, incredibly, after all that, we get this, an almost perfect summer's afternoon, and the Friday's play at Lords can go ahead. Knocked him over, the new ball, the second new ball has worked straight away for India and R.P. Singh. Just momentarily side bottom, never suggested permanence at the crease with expansive stroke play, and now he's gone. Well, that was an ill-judged stroke, really, from the side bottom. It was good bowling by Singh, just having the sense to pitch it up and angle it in towards the stumps, not looking to try and swing it away, but hit the stumps instead. But side bottom there, his head in the air, a little bit of a big swing, would have been better for the night watchman to try and hang around for a while and support Peterson. As a result, though, England lose their fifth wicket at 272. Ian Bell is the new batsman replacing Ryan Sidebottom. He's already scored a century here at Lords this season against the West Indies. Tough task against the second new ball. But what a commanding start to Ian Bell's innings. You sleep, you dream of a playing a stroke like that to get off the mark at Lords. And that's a fulfillment. Oh, has it carried? Well, Peterson walks and the finger goes up from Simon Toffel. So this new ball is working wonders. In near a bowling much better on this second day. And that is a huge wicket because it's him. It's Kevin Peterson. It is an absolutely massive blow by India and really Kevin Peterson has missed the boat here because he was 34 not out overnight. A perfect platform for a big innings today. Instead, he's gone driving at that. Whoa, did it carry? Peterson just walked. He didn't wait for the umpire's decision. But now, let's see what's happening here. Peterson is now walking back as if perhaps the England players on the balcony have suggested that that didn't carry. Is he actually out or not? That's the question. Now, the third umpire, the television umpire, has been called upon. This is, well, an interesting moment in this match. Confusion, because Tuffel certainly sent Peterson on his way. It's after Peterson had walked. Definitely bounced, no doubt about that. Definitely bounced. I think there's anything doubtful about it whatsoever. Could Dhoni have seen it? Bounce, uh, could slip Corden. I've seen it. That's the end result. Not out. Of course, the Indians can't believe it because it looked for all money as if Dhoni's big gauntlets had wrapped their hands round that delivery, that ball, and taken a clean catch. But the cameras have shown otherwise, and Peterson is reinstated. Simon Taufel, he's the best umpire around. He is a great student of the laws of the game. He spends all night looking at the book and making sure he's well-versed in everything. But I think also he's a smart umpire, and he's, in this case, just used a bit of common sense. He's seen the situation. He's seen what the England players were telling the batsman as he was walking off, and he's reacted accordingly, and he's done absolutely the right thing. That's gone a long way. It's gone all the way. It's gone for six. It's a good, solid pull shot. Ian Bell in the early goings of this innings is hitting the ball sumptuously and with a great deal of confidence. I wonder how much sting this will just take out of the Indian bowlers with the second new ball. Oh. Now is it out this time? Zaya Khan. Well, a double dose. And I think this time it's official. Peterson is gone two balls later after the incident. And India have uh, recovered. Well, justice is done in a way because Zahir Khan deserved the wicket the first time and he certainly deserved it the second time. This was a much better delivery, he had to play it, it just left him down the slope and he could only just try and withdraw his bat too late and that time it carried nicely, waist high to Dhoni, so absolutely no doubt about the catch. Maybe Peterson was the man who actually lost concentration more than the Indians as he goes for 37. Could be close. Yes. Yes. Rishan strikes. Matt Pryor is gone. India in command. They've picked up three wickets today in a very quick time. It's the second new ball that's done the trick. Also one or two slightly loose shots from the English batsman. Matt Pryor, who is more accustomed to coming in in very prosperous circumstances, comes in here with England a little bit of bother. Just 
plays slightly round that. It came back to him down the slope. Hawkeye suggests maybe height was an issue, but Steve Buckner didn't. He's given him out. 287 for seven. Third wicket in 23 balls for India. Prior gone for one. Now, here's Chris Tremlett to play his first test innings. That is brilliant. Quite brilliant from Sri Santh, in fact, from India all round. This is the perfect example of how to come out after a break, get everything right, and dominate the opposition. They've done it brilliantly. And this is pretty much plum, much plumber than Matt Pryor was. Steve Buckner having very little hesitation in giving that one out. Just wonder if, really, the Indians were buoyed by that refused dismissal of Peterson. They seem to be the ones that have reacted better to that. And as a result, England have now declined to 287 for eight. Oh, glorious shot from Ian Bell. That's against the run of play. He seems to be pretty untroubled by these Indian bowlers, as opposed to the men the other end. LBW is LBW. Fantastic in swinger at good lively pace from Sri Santh. All the potential that he knew and we knew he had has come to the fore in this terrific spell of fast bowling. Well, the difference between the Indian bowling uh, today since the rain is the ball with such aggression, like they did last night and got a couple of wickets. They're hitting the deck, they're really bowling at the batsman rather than just putting the ball there. And he's paying dividends. Monty goes. Very clear cut LBW, not difficult to give that. 297 for nine. Didn't look as if it had. Ian Bell, who'd seemed perfectly comfortable, has dragged one on from Zahir Khan. And suddenly England have been bowled out. The most extraordinary collapse. I suppose you'd say that one of England's top four should have gone on and made something of their excellent start. Having said that, England were 252 for two and then lost eight for 46. Nothing from the lower order at all in the face of some pretty impressive Indian bowling. They closed in with Anil Kumble yesterday evening. He finished with two for 60. But Zahir Khan, Srisanth and R.P. Singh all doing their bit after Ganguly had taken the one early wicket. Have a look at this fall of wickets graphic. Look first at Thursday evening, 6.34 and 6.40 when the players came back after bad light. Michael Vaughan and Paul Collingwood, the men to go. That was a problem. Then today against the new ball well, just complete drama here at Lords. No one even expected cricket. What's more, they got a collapse. Oh, dropped it. Matthew Pryor, the technique wasn't good. The judgment will be questioned as well. Andrew Strauss looked like he could have gobbled it up. Well, he's a perfect line and length. Gets Jaffa feeling for it. And the footwork by Pryor is appalling. Nicely played. Was in Jaffa, a stylish batsman, uh, quite an experienced opener, and that's the first boundary for India in the seventh over. That's got to be close. That's got to be close. Taupal raises the finger, and really, Sidebottoms deserved that because he's explored the deficiencies in Kartik's technique, and finally, he's perished as a result. A magnificent performance from side bottom recalled after six years only what a month or so ago and leading the attack today in the absence of more senior bowlers he's bowled quite excellently classic example of left arm in swing at lively pace and he's asked questions with almost every ball he's bowled well he might celebrate just five for Kartik 18 for one India It's a good ball. That's that's the area to bowl to Dravid early on. It's keeping him uncertain around the off stump. He thinks he should have left it. That's it. I think he's got him. Fantastic. 
James Anderson has done it. He's bowled so consistently well outside off stump, and it just proves if you bowl a really good ball, you can get a really good player out. So impressive, the late movement, the nippy pace, but the late movement at the full length that draws the batsman into the stroke. That's the value of James Anderson. Echoes here of his debut way, way back when he thrilled one evening and everybody thought they'd found something very special. Well, Michael Vaughan is convinced Anderson is special. He has been for some time. Raoul Dravid is the man who's out, one of the Galacticos, we might call him. He made just two. It's 27 for two now. Sachin Tendulkar has delayed his entrance, but here he comes. One of the great players. And it is under that expectation that this man comes to the crease every day of his cricketing life. Tendulkar's first ball. Whoa, and a clever in-swinger from James Anderson. What interesting thinking. What excitement and anticipation here. Grand old ground with Tendulkar coming to the crease. There it is, that's important for Tendulkar. Not only gets him uh, a couple of runs, but it takes him to the third highest run scorer in Test match cricket. He overtakes Steve Waugh. Confirmation of what Jeffrey Boyka just said, Sachin Tendulkar has moved into third place in the all-time list of leading run scorers. Ahead of them, though, the former Australian captain, Alan Border, and Brian Lara, the former West Indies captain, by about a thousand runs. If Tendulkar plays for another couple of seasons, he'll be the leader of the pack. Shot. Lovely shot. He's very good at uh, when they pitch it up and he drives the ball, is what's in Jaffa. Sometimes when he's defending, he doesn't quite get well enough forward with his front foot, but when he's driving it, he looks a classical player. That's an authentic shot. He just saw that dropped a little short and a little wide. He flayed it through the offside. That really is the first authentic shot from Tendulkar. Now oh, that is Sachin Tendulkar. It's now his highest test match score at Lords, but much more importantly, that illustrates the man perfectly. Safe, it's all right, and it's going to bring Jaffa his 50. Got an ooh and an ah from uh, Panasar and one or two others. Got a bit of an ooh from Andrew Strauss down on the boundary, but they've run four. Excellent. Dramatic 50 from Mozim Jaffa. Sachin must be out LBW. James Anderson, you beauty. What a great bit of bowling. Did Tendulkar for the length that was much quicker than anything else he's bowled, almost 89 mph, and may have even slanted back into him. Terrific stuff from Anderson. It was so good, it caught Tendulkar stuck on the crease. Look, he couldn't get his feet out of the block holes, so it wasn't too difficult for the umpire. Just had to work out, was it sliding down leg side? I don't think so. Probably it leg stump that. Beautifully bowled. Sad for Tendulkar, but brilliant for England. Broken through. Bit of cloud cover coming. And now they can get at Laxman and Ganguly. 106 for three. That's in the air and just out of reach of those two gullies. Ganguly. Gets one through. Does he do it, Chris? He does. Tremlett, he gets done well. The type of breakthrough towards the end of the day's play Michael Vaughan was searching for. Look at how much it means. And the first test wicket for Tremlett. Great reward for some consistent bowling. It is too, because he bowled a very good over the, the over before to Jaffa. 
And he was just discomforted around the off stump. Then this one was directed at his body. The lift that Tremlett gets from six foot eight is difficult to handle. Grinding out a valuable 58 for India, but he's gone now, India, 134 for four. Play finally ending at 7.30. What an eccentric day. Who would have thought after that deluge that we would have had 68 overs play? In that time, India have replied to England's 298 with 145 for four. This morning, with a little leg glance from the last ball of the first over from Chris Tremlett. That's it, he's done it at last, he's found the perfect delivery. He's been looking for that for several overs, Anderson having bowled a lot of balls across him, has set him up for the one coming back in. Sarah Ganguly plays all round that excellent delivery from Jimmy Anderson, and the fifth Indian wicket goes. I just love the way that he's kept this in swinger hidden for a long time. I agree with Simon Hughes that a lot was pushed across Ganguly. And Anderson, who's bowled very well in this match, has kept him guessing. And to his detriment, Ganguly goes 155 for five. Might be caught, should be caught. James Anderson underneath it, who has an excellent pair of hands. And Ryan Sidebottom gets the wicket he deserves. Finally, R.P. Singh caves in, really, you'd call it. I think so much resistance. In the end, he, he just couldn't take any more, and he had to have a little dart. If anybody deserves a wicket, it's Sidebottom, and 173 for six now, India. Yeah. Oh, yes, what cricket by James Anderson. Really, this morning, he has looked world-class. You couldn't praise him high enough. He goes to his 50th Test match wicket, and he does so with some style. Well, that was fabulous bowling. It was a ball before that made uh, Dhoni uncomfortable, then he gives him another one that's close to his body and getting up into the chest. And he didn't play it very well. It was a neat catch. 175 for seven. Nice touch from Anil Kumble. Just use Anderson's pace very well. Ah! Now has that here, Pappas? Yes! He was getting closer all the time, side button. And in the opinion of umpire Toffel, that there was Pat first, and he would have gone on to hit the off stump. A little bit of inward movement. And Sidebottom deserves it. He's been a revelation, Sidebottom, since he came into the side in the second test of the summer. He's never strayed from a very probing line and length and a little bit of in-swing there to the right-handers. That looked pretty plumb. Foot wasn't outside the line. Well, Hawkeye suggesting maybe height was an issue, but it was good enough for Simon Taufel. It was certainly good enough for Ryan Sidebottom. 192 for eight, India, still 106 behind. Keeper. Beautifully bowled right inside bottom. He's got the big wicket, Lakshman trying to farm the bowl in, but that's a big wicket. Great thing about side bottom and Anderson this morning is they've done what English bowlers do best. They've pitched full, they've used the conditions, they've always done something with the ball, and they've asked the batsman to play. Batting's been difficult now, another one gone. Boy. BBS Laxman, such a gifted stroke maker. Just 15 for him in 41 quite tortured balls. It's 197 for nine. Oh, oh, just through the gap. Third slip there, thought he had it. Brings up 200 for India, but uh, 
they're still in trouble against some superb seam bowling by England. Oh, that's out. That's out. Off the glove. Rahia Khan goes. Five wickets for Anderson, and certainly he and Saibot, and one of them, has deserved to go on the honours board at Lords. And it's going to be young Anderson. Beautifully bowled this morning by England. Terrific stuff. England leading by 97. That's a very strong position to be in, given that we're not halfway through the match in terms of either overs or runs. Terrific performance by the bowlers. No, 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 that's how they started in the first innings. Bowling too many at Cook's legs, and he just leg glanced it for four. Yeah. Almost had it. It was good bowling from Sarah Khan. Good shot. Nice, efficient cricket from India. Zahir Khan, the wicket-taker, Sachin Tendulkar, the catcher. Andrew Strauss, with just 18, will be enormously frustrated by that. He'll have seen this as an opportunity to cement the promise of the first innings. Good bit of bowling from Zahir Khan. He has the ability to wobble the ball both ways, sometimes in towards the left-hander. That one just left him up the hill. And it was the perfect length to Strauss as well, with his... Rather inactive front leg, not moving much, and as a result, the little edge through to the little master. 40 for one, England. Oh, that is horribly close to LBW. It is LBW. You sometimes can sense that the longer Steve Buckley waits, the worse it is for the batsman. Twice in the match, then, Alistair Cook, LBW. Credit to Zahir Khan, who's suddenly making England play, and it's costing them having to do so. That's underlined Zahi Khan's ability to make the ball move both ways. That one just nipped back to the left-hander. Did it hit Cook outside the line? Possibly. It was marginal. The height was OK, though. And certainly the angle was good. Hitting middle, just near the top of the middle stump. But a quarter to five, unfortunately, the rain has returned and the cover-up is required both off the field and on it. England in a reasonably good position at 54 for two. Have lost the openers, but Vaughan and Peterson's wickets are intact, though they've had their problems against a much improved Indian attack in the second inning. Zahir Khan in particular posing problems to both left-handers and right-handers, well supported by R.P. Singh. It's now five to seven, and they're coming back on. Peterson and Vaughan at the wicket. They don't need this 35 minutes, not at all. Oh, streaky and lucky. Well, it nearly worked. It actually swung away a bit. It certainly encouraged Peterson to go for the stroke. That's why you must make the batsman play. Brilliant stroke. That shot to the boundary. Flicked away for what looks like a boundary. Just a nice emphatic end to the day for England. Another day of interruptions and another day of fluctuating fortunes, but England have ended it 77 for two in their second innings. They did lose both openers for 43, but Vaughan and Peterson have done well to survive that last tricky little session, particularly against Zahir Khan. 2 for 36 from 14 overs, which means England lead overall by 174. It's a good position to be in, but they have to bat well to capitalise on it. and pounces on it like a man eager to break the shackles oh streaky bit wide there to be driving beautifully bowled by RP Singh he drew him into the shot 
Out, beautifully bowled, round the wicket, coming down the slope. Might even have got a little inside edge, but he gated Michael Vaughan with an absolute corker. Well bowled, RP Singh. Top stuff. Looks like he planned that wicket because he bowled a couple of balls to Vaughan that veered towards the slips, and then this one was the orthodox in swinger. Going down the hill, Vaughan was expecting it maybe to hold its line, but it just ducked in through the gate. Little inside edge helping it on its way, removing the off stump. So the better of the two third wicket pair, dismissed first, surprisingly. 102 for three, England. Well, that's Peterson just slashing a wide one. It wanted hitting, and you can't bowl at Peterson. He's looking to score all the time. He's not a defensive player. Now, what did that in? That's out, off the glove. Beautifully bowled. I'm always talking about if you're going to give a batsman a short ball, make sure it's at the body, chest high, neck high, so he has to get out of the way. It's an awkward height to play. He's a skiddy little bowler, and he just surprised Collingwood here with that. He didn't get up very high because he's quite short, but plenty of body action in the delivery. Just catching Collingwood out, he's starting to lunge forward, in fact he's batting out of his crease there which just uh, posed an extra problem, simple catch, the second slip Collingwood gone, and England only lead by 211, just a little falter Yep, well that's an easy ball again, leg side tickled away Ian Bell's you no, know, he's, he's been in pretty good form this summer, so he's got to bowl well at him. Got him. R.P. Singh is having a dream morning. Critical wicket. And uh, now England really are in trouble. Uh, 2.29 ahead. And uh, England struggling. Didn't bounce probably as much as Bell expected. But he had to drag it a long way to pull it from outside off stump. Three wickets have now fallen this morning, 55 runs scored. What a cricket match. Just nine for Ian Bell, 1-3-2 for five. England lead by 2-2-9. What a stroke. <laughs> Stand and deliver. He has to be amongst the world's most dangerous opponents because it happens from nothing. Yep. Welcome 54, Kevin Peterson, given all that has been said, at least by him. Tough start to his innings. And he's found some rhythm, found some form, and more importantly, he's still there to try to give England a substantial total. Oh, well, I think give the batsman credit. Pryor there just opened the face a little bit. I don't think that was an edge, and that shot away for four. What a fast outfield this is. The crowd are loving it, because most of them support in England. The run's coming very quickly now. Oh, a good shot. As soon as you stray onto his pads, he whipped that away with lots of wrist, and... He hit that hard as well. Devin Peterson is really looking to get on top of these bowlers. Whoa! Well, what super confidence. Cumbly's the man that bowls tight. He just sauntered down the pitch and lifted him right out of the park. 93 to 99. Yeah, oh, there it is. And what a wonderful hundred. The ball went for four in the end, but he wasn't interested. Just the hundred, his ninth Test match hundred. His third Test match hundred at Lords, and his first against India.
And of course, fortune favours the brave. More wonderful timing brings up the 100 partnership between this pair of magnificent ball strikers. Peterson has the lion's share of it, but Pryor's done his bit. That's carried. That is carried. It's a superb delivery from Zahir Khan. Matt Pryor is gone. Baldwell yesterday struggled in the early parts of today, but finds a superb delivery. Well, it's amazing how often a break in concentration for the batsman does the trick for the bowlers. Drinks are taken and nicks it straight away, first ball. England lead by 348 at the moment, they're 251 for six. Chris Chemlett faces Matthew Pryor at number eight, first class average of just under 20. Two wickets in two balls for Zahir Khan. An incredible turnaround for India here after the water break. Well, I think it was just a straightish ball that he missed, really. I think when we see the replay, well pitched up, fairly quick, and he missed it. Look, inside edge onto the pad. And, oh dear, that's a pair. England still 251 now for seven, and still the lead is 348. Zahir Khan, he stands on the cusp of his uh, fifth five-wicket haul in Test match cricket, and he's on a hat-trick as well. It's well bowled. Driver has caught it. Ryan side bottom goes, Kumble has a wicket in the second innings. Well, the problem for the tail enders when it comes to Kumble is they can't pick him. 266 for eight now England, but they still lead by 363, which is huge. He comes in quite close now for RP Singh's last ball of the over. Peterson on the strike, thinking about a boundary, and instead he's dragged it onto his stumps. Almost as if he's expended so much energy trying to smack the ball when the fielders were in the deep that he hadn't got enough left to do anything when the fielders were up. But it was an exquisite and exhilarating innings. Perhaps a little tame in the end, but still, he's turned the game for England with a brilliant 134. This will be one of the great receptions. A pretty full Lords will stand. And go the journey with Peterson all the way to the dressing room. 275 for nine. That's got to be close. That's got to be close. It's a knob and a finger from Steve Buckner. Five for, for the first time in Test cricket by RP Singh, but he hasn't stopped England from getting an almost unassailable lead of 379. Kevin Peterson's 134, the centrepiece of England's performance, that was a magnificent innings, and the partnership with Matt Pryor, who made 42 in 61 balls, turned it England's way. The Indian bowlers, four for Zahir Khan, five for R.P. Singh. Delightful for him that he'll go on the honours board here. India need 380 runs to win it, and England have a session and a day to bowl India out. As usual, much depended in the morning on Kevin Peterson's fortunes, and initially he struggled against the moving ball. Notice, though, a crooked bat and a slightly cross-batted approach to playing the balls around the off-stump, which had him in trouble. Michael Vaughan, on the other hand, his partner, has an immaculate defence, and notice how straight his blade was, the ball hitting the middle of the bat. We can compare their styles, Peterson on the left. You see Peterson taking his bat back towards the slips, whereas Vaughan taking his bat back directly straight towards the stumps. And Peterson, when he plays the defensive shot around the off stump, tends to play across the line slightly and with a crooked bat, whereas Vaughan plays straight down the line with a straight bat. Peterson did hang around by hook or by crook in that first hour, and ironically, it was Vaughan who was out first, his straight battedness actually causing his downfall there, the inside edge, whereas Peterson's crooked battedness actually bringing runs to a similar delivery.
the weakness, his cross battedness becomes a strength as he gets in, even sometimes off one leg. He couldn't have done it, though, without the help of Matt Pryor, who came in at 132 for five, with England wobbling. And what Pryor does is he's very solid in defence, but he's good at taking the quick singles. And he was very adept at dealing with Anil Kumble. Sometimes batsmen get LBW to him, but Pryor was clever to keep his bat in front of the pad and avoid LBW. And this was the fourth century partnership he's shared in his eight innings so far. But once he's got the measure of the pitch, no one can take the game away from the opposition quite like Kevin Peterson. And it was his panache and power that has left India with the tall order of making 380, which would be the highest fourth inning score ever made to win a test match at Lords. Oh, good shot. Beautifully played. Kartik making a big stride forward. He's a little fella. He didn't do that so well first innings. He stayed back. He was wary of it. This time he got his foot right out to the pitch of the ball. Oh, well played. Well, he's played some marvellous shots, is Carty. Gone! Mazim Jaffa has clipped it ever so softly to forward square. Kevin Peterson takes the catch. And Anderson's change of end has worked and given England the breakthrough. Yeah, you kind of sensed it might be Anderson. There's so much skill in his bowling that it, it seems to have brought greater self-belief. It's as if he runs in thinking he'll take a wicket with every ball that he bowls. And so often with self-belief, you'll pick up a wicket with a bad ball. Legs time half volley, caught at mid-wicket, a big smile. And Jaffa's innings comes to a close. Eight he made, it's 38 for one. for Ralph Rabbit. It's taken no time at all to get his eye in. Oh, that's close. That's worth a shout. Yes, he's gone. It seemed to do him for length and kept a little bit low, I think. But just when he hit in, I thought he didn't get forward. He got caught in that no-man's land, sort of nowhere. What a big wicket for Chris Tremlett in England. I mean, there's an argument that's hit him outside the line, but the minute that the ball struck the pad, we all fell out. You'd never blame an umpire for that one. Dravid will have a grumble about it in the dressing room to whence he heads. He's gone for nine, it's 55 for two, but we thought it was a good decision the minute it hit him. Mm. Well, it was a gift ball, and in that heavy bat, he just clipped it away with great pace. That's well struck by Tendulkar. There's a bit of muscularity and intent about that shot. A little bit wide from Panasar. Ah, and that's got to be close. Is that out? But has given him. Panasar has done it again. And Tendulkar has only made 53 runs in the entire match. 100 at headquarters has eluded him again. Panasar is going berserk. And that is the final exit, perhaps at Lords of the Little Master, Sachin Tendulkar, gone for 16. It's a great wicket. Now, I don't think Sachin Tendulkar intended to play a shot eventually. And yeah, the bat comes down quite late. Now, where's he struck? Outside the off stump. If he's not playing a shot, it's late. And I don't think Bucknell was convinced that initially he was going to play a shot and maybe just struck on the off stump. Great wicket for Panasar and the end of Tendulkar. For 16, 84 for three. Anderson Fence is getting Ganguly out here the same way he did in the first innings. Oh, that's ladle in the air and just wide of the slips. Ganguly had no idea what to do there. Should have run away for four quite quickly. We'll take Ganguly to 26 off just 34 balls. If he makes it, this is 54. And it's Kartik, and he makes it as well. A lovely combative innings. And one full of character from uh, this young man. 
Dinesh Kartik unbeaten with 56, Saurabh Ganguly with 36 have done remarkably well for India. When Tendulkar went, you felt that the whole house of cards might collapse. Not so. Nothing for Ryan Sidebottom this afternoon, but a wicket each for Anderson, Tremlett and Panasar. 243 then for India to win it, 137 for three as the fifth day looms tomorrow. Seven wickets for England to take. We just hope that the weather's OK. Could this run away for four, yes. First boundary of the day. These are vital runs and an important way to start this final day's play for Ganguly and India. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Ryan Sidebottom. Swing and seam. And it is accounted for Sir of Ganguly. This is a vital breakthrough. And despondent Ganguly heads back. He knows what his value could have been. One of the hardest things to do to get the ball to hold its line and trap a man in front. So often you see a left armer get the ball to nip back to left-handed batsmen, but this is just quality bowling. Just about pitching in line between wicket and wicket on that danger zone there. Going on to clip the top of off stump, says Steve Buckner. It's the big wicket too, Ganguly, a potential matchman, a 40, he made it's 143 for four. Gone, got him, yes, Anderson was working away at something outside the off stump, looking to have it full and wide and swinging, and the Kartik went for one adventure too many. I think a bit like Ganguly's wicket, enormous praise must go to the bowler here, England have worked out what they want to do and they're able to execute it to get that out swinger in the perfect tempting spot for the drive is ideal classic english swing bowling in conditions that are helping it's an overcast day <laughs> look at the new lovers at war india still need two three five england however need just five wickets to win this first test match india 145 for five Nicely bowled. Just the little wristiness of Latchman allowed him to carve that one through the offside. Fairly poor bit of fielding by Chris Tremlett, allowing the batsman to come through for three. The idea was right from the bowler, though. And he's chipped that one over the top of them. Well, that was a little bit similar to his first innings dismissal, except this time he managed to get a bit more elevation on the shot. And it brings him four runs, but probably a moral victory to the bowler oh another one in the air and just evading gully so at the moment the Indian batsman living dangerously that was Lakshman lucky to profit by four well it looks as if Michael Vaughan's realized that uh, Tremlett's better from the pavilion end because Collingwood's gonna bowl and over uh, the first balls a swinging long hop that gets smashed to the boundary by Doney well, I will be aware as an Indian batsman that the rain may come to my aid as a team. It's definitely going to come at some stage, so we have to bat sensibly throughout the day. So they've got to save the game. It's an excellent 50 partnership, taking 115 balls, so they've taken care to play themselves in. I'll bet these two reckon they can win the game it's a very quick outfield 200 now for India oh good shot thumped 
square of the wicket by Doney. That's a good retort to some shorter pitch bowling from Anderson. Say, so, well, pitch it up, mate. And India now only 152 to win. Bowling, brilliant stuff from Chris Tremlett in his first test. And he's really struck the critical blow there. BVS Laxman gone, was that very, very sloppy, but it was a good ball, got through the gate, and England now whiffing victory. What a length by Tremlett. The man who loves to wait on the back foot, found out by a ball that zips back in off the seam. It's high class from Chris Tremlett, a couple of key wickets in this innings. Well done, the big fella. Indian eating 149, are uh, six down for 231. VVS Laxman's gone for 39. There we go, new cherry is taken. Seminal moment in this test match as England push for victory. 139 to win for India. Four wickets to get for Michael Vaughan and a nervous glances towards the heavens once again. Ah! Now that's close, that's close. And Pat Buckner's taking a long time and he shakes the head, puts the finger up. And Ryan Sidebottom has finally found the LBW once again against Daniel Kumble. He had been working for it. Buckner took a long time, but Kumble is now heading in the right direction as far as England are concerned. Well, he's staying back for a full-length delivery. That's the problem. Look where his left foot is on the batting crease. He really should have been forward. And it took his time, the umpire, but he got it right. Cumbly's gone for three, 247 for seven, as a few spots of rain come down. That's 50 for Mahendra Singh Dhoni. Great cheer going around, Lord, from the Indian supporters and from the dressing room. He's an exciting cricketer and a popular one. Zahir Khan wandered off to square leg in the hope that Simon Taffel didn't know about it, he did. That might be Tremlett's extra bounce, it looks like a bit of a strangle down the leg side, but when you're a man of six foot eight, very hard to control anything away from your body like this. He might have feathered the glove down the leg side, I think Zahir Khan might have been kicking himself on his walk away from the crease as well. Good reward for Tremlett, he's been aggressive to both Dhoni and to Zahir Khan. Zahir Khan's gone for naught, 254 for eight. Ah! Well done, Monty, well done. Nine down, India. Well, it was a very wonderful full delivery. You watch, it's right up there. And he's singing, he hits across the line, you see. He's hitting it towards mid-wicket. Yeah, they're thrilled to bits. They're all big wickets now, every single one. India still needing 117 to win and one wicket to go. That's a biggie. What a ball. What a ball. What a bowler. Oh, brilliant stroke. Wonderful improvisation. Four more for Dhoni. 103 to win India. One wicket to take England. Ah! Oh, it's a good call. No, Steve Buckner doesn't like it. I guess it's a big stride forward by Sri Santh. Michael Ford can't believe it. Nor, it seems, could any England player. The ball's got to hold its line, and that's well, it has done. Seeing Hawkeye. It looks a whole lot more out than it did the minute it hit him. Cool, how important may that be then? Oh, goodness me. Everybody's heart is pumping, everybody's. The match may be in the hands of two men in white and black. Oh, they offer the light. Oh, my goodness, would you believe it?
And two hours and 40 minutes after the players left the field, I'm afraid to report that the match was abandoned as a draw. That is the dismal scene at Lords. Some very depressed English fans and players. I mean, that picture tells the story. And some delighted Indian fans, I have to say. Mahendra Singh Dhoni, the star of the show, unbeaten with 76. What an innings that was. 282 for nine at the end of it all from 96 overs, the Indians. That was the most that anybody had batted in the match. Two for Ryan Sidebottom, two for James Anderson, three for Chris Tremlett, great promise there, and two for the effervescent Monty Panasar. The man of the match was Kevin Peterson for his breathtaking hundred. That set up England's opportunity, and only the weather could deny them. Big four in the middle order who get so much press. Disappointing game for them. Is that a problem for you? It's a disappointing game for us and definitely, you know, the guys uh, would like to perform and do well. Uh, the boys uh, have performed, you know, and that's that's why they have the repetitions they have is because they have earned those repetitions and, you know, it's come through years of, of, of hard work and, and years of performances. Uh, we didn't do it in this game. Uh, we've got a couple of test matches to, ahead to go and, you know, correct that uh, and try and do the best we can and, and, and that's what the guys are focusing on. Well, the match may have ended in a frustrating draw, but there were some plus points for England. Kevin Peterson's brilliant batting for one. But the real essence of this test match was the conflict between four really inexperienced England bowlers with only 37 test appearances between them against four Indian batting megastars with just the 419 test appearances. England's bowling attack featured James Anderson playing his first home test for three years, Ryan Sidebottom playing his fifth, Chris Tremlett making his test debut, and Monty Panesar, a relative veteran of 17 tests. They were up against Rahul Dravid, over 9,000 test runs, Sachin Tendulkar, nearly 11,000, and with Saurav Ganguly and VVS Lakshman, the Indian Big Four have a total of over 30,000 test runs. James Anderson started the route in the first innings with an excellent delivery to Dravid, swinging away up the hill and taking his outside edge, and then he followed it up with a brilliant delivery to Tendulkar, for nipping back the other way to trap the little master LBW for 37. A real feature of Anderson's bowling was his consistency to the right hand, is just outside off stump, a great line and length, perseverant, persistent, swinging the odd one away to Dravid like that and nipping the odd one back to Tendulkar. And he's evolved a good bowling strategy too, with lots of deliveries going across Ganguly and then bringing a late one back through the gate to surprise him and bowl him neck and crop. Ryan Sidebottom is a good foil for Anderson, swinging the ball generally the other way into the right-handers, but then after that one to Laxman, he went wide of the crease and angled one across to take his outside edge. And the big four for India had made only 88 between them in the first innings. Chris Tremlett stepped up to the plate in the second, his six foot eight inch frame getting steepling bounce to Dravid, getting him on the back foot and then bringing one down the hill when he wasn't quite far enough forward to get him LBW for his second failure in the test. And a similar delivery defeated Lachman's desperate jab. Side bottom had earlier trapped Ganguly LBW. But it was Monty Panasar on Sunday night who teased out the big wicket. Notice how much spin he was getting here to Dinesh Kartik. Sachin Tendulkar is the non-striker, and he's seeing these balls turn. Then when he gets down Panasar's end, you see what he does. He's trying to play for the spin here that he's seen from down the other end. He's allowing for the ball to turn. It doesn't. It just goes straight on with the arm, and he is trapped LBW. You can see those two deliveries. The red one is the one that spun to Kartik. The blue one same release but just going straight on with the arm and taking Tendulkar LBW total euphoria for Panasar exasperation for Tendulkar who has never even made a half century at headquarters and the Indian big four managed only a total of 192 runs in the match and not even a 50 between them we're really pleased with the way that we played our cricket in this game we played positive cricket um, you know with the young inexperienced bowling attack going into the game there's a lot of talk with how would they stand up to playing at Lords bowling at a real experienced Indian batting lineup they came through it beautifully you know Chris Tremlett on debut was outstanding Jimmy Anderson coming back into the team produced spells of skill variation and pace uh, Ryan side bottom just came back from where he left off against the West Indies and obviously Monty we've seen a lot of Monty to know that he's a good bowler now so really pleased with the way that the bowlers bowl but more so we pleased with the attitude of the player throughout the whole game we we really pushed to try and get a result and with a lot of the game being lost through the weather you know it was a great effort to get them nine down disappointed yes but you know we'll have to try and do that again next week